So handheld gaming has had quite a resurgence in 2022, thanks in part primarily to two systems. I would say the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck. I've been talking about the Nintendo Switch for years. I have recently started talking about the Steam Deck more because I finally got one. Two great platforms, two platforms that really complement each other. I don't put them in against a war with each other because I think they do very, very different things. And what they do focus on, they do it very well. But of course, when there's success of other companies in the handheld market, more companies are going to come along. Recently, Logitech announced the Logitech G Cloud, a new handheld device from Logitech that was based primarily on cloud technology. Now, I'm not a big cloud technology fan. I don't think it works all that great most of the time, and I have really good internet. But still, what drew me to this system was the fact that Xbox was heavily promoting this, almost treating this as if this was a portable Xbox, because xCloud is actually built into the system. It runs natively on this, and when you boot up the system, xCloud is right there. Phil Spencer was talking about how much fun he had playing his Xbox games on the xCloud. Many influencers were talking about this and Twitter check marks saying, oh, it's so cool, it's so cool. So RGT decided to get one of these. Now, luckily, I got this at the $300 price point. If you pre-ordered it, it was $300. Now it's $350. And the more I play this thing, the more I question why. Why does it exist? What does it do? Let's talk. All right, so here is the Logitech G Cloud system itself. I will say it's not bad you know it's lightweight the analog sticks on it feel pretty good the buttons themselves seem pretty responsive not a terrible d-pad or anything like that looking at the back of the system we got nice little engraved g we of course have our little grips for holding it it's very lightweight too so I, I think that's a big plus about this system as well on the bottom here you got a headphone jack your charging spot as well it's a USB-C, and then up top you have your volume buttons your on off button here so everything seems okay. You also do have L and R triggers with two triggers. And that's where things get a little bit murky for me because I don't have the biggest hands in the world. I wear like a medium and gloves, but these buttons are very, very close together. And when you're trying to press the L2 trigger, you almost always hit the L1 trigger. And like my fingers aren't super fat. So uh, will that take play a role into this? Let's just see how it's going. Here's the system as we have it turned on. We're on the options menu. Just looking at some basic things you can adjust. You can, of course, have Bluetooth controllers set up to it. Adjust different things to make the battery last longer. They do say that the battery can last up to 12 hours. And I'm sure on a minimal brightness setting, it can. And maybe not doing very taxing things with the system. But I don't know how that would really play into reality. We're going to turn the brightness up because you want to see how actual games run on this. And like I said, you have to remember, at its core, this is an Android tablet with a controller kind of built into the sides of it so you have the google play store and all the variety of google play games now i don't really play many mobile games unless i have a sponsor then i will gladly play your mobile game but i decided you know what i should probably check something out here what's something i could think of off the top of my head oh good old sonic the hedgehog 2 because they made the sega forever games where you could play them i actually played streets of rage on my mobile device this way so i thought you know what this will be cool it will check out the controller we'll see how it works we'll see how it feels with a game that i am familiar with so let's go ahead and install this and then all of a sudden we run into problems and i don't know why because when i played this on my phone the uh, streets of rage version it was fine but every time i tried to play this i'm playing the free version of the game i literally can't do anything they put up an advertisement okay, okay i get that that's the whole point of the free to play version is that they're advertisements let's skip the advertisement and play the game so okay jumping back into it and and then no, no no we're not or we need more ads so let's continue Oh, oh no, you're, you're getting another ad. So I never got to play this and I was a little bit disappointed. But maybe Nintendo will come through with Mario Kart Tour because that's a game that's available on Google Play and yeah, there's no tape mode with this. So uh, yeah, um, I, I wasn't able to play that either. Screw that though. I'm here for the xCloud stuff. This is what's supposed to be good. This is what's supposed to be the driving force. And I will say Need for Speed Heat isn't bad on the xCloud service. You log in just like you would on any sort of device. And Need for Speed Heat is a, is a fun game. You know, it's a game that a lot of people seem to have forgotten about within the Need for Speed franchise, but it seems to be running okay. The whole thing with cloud-based gaming is 
you never know if it's going to really run good or not. I've done a ton of cloud-based stuff on my Xbox. I like to use it when I'm playing or when I'm on the treadmill kind of just running. And I like to play some games while I'm on the treadmill. And sometimes it runs great. And then sometimes it doesn't run great. I don't really know what sort of constitutes whether it's going to run great or not. But usually the Xbox runs pretty solid. I've done PS3 uh, games via the PS5 system now with the PlayStation Extra tiers and you could stream those games. I've actually streamed those in my basement and they seem to work fine. But it seems like at least half the time I use the Logitech G Cloud. I'm not getting a great experience with this. We're going to check out some Halo Infinite multiplayer here. And I mean, it's okay. It's nothing great. It doesn't seem like it's being optimized running on this device or anything. It just seems all right. You're still going to have your artifacting. You're still going to have your slowdown. And the, there's definitely a lag with the controls when you play cloud games. And I know you're saying, well, this is a competitive multiplayer shooter. I don't care. This is a game that's on the Xbox system. This is a game that's on Xbox Game Pass. I think a lot of people would like to play Halo on the go. But then I start to have problems with the actual design of the system itself because those analog sticks, I don't know. The, the more I play with them, the more I, I don't really care for them. The more I, I find little problems and little inconsistencies with just the movement. And that could just be based on xCloud itself, you know, not running at optimized, you know, features and settings and speeds and whatnot. But still, like... I just felt like I, I wasn't fully in control of my character. I'm not great at Halo, but I'm certainly not like the worst player in the world. And the L2 triggers and the R2 triggers, those really came into play with this because of course, I'm trying to aim down the sights with L2. I'm trying to shoot people with uh, R2 and it just became problematic. My hands were not very comfortable when holding this system and having to utilize those buttons because I feel like they're not positioned in a good enough spot. They should be positioned more so towards the back of the system. There should be a gap between L1 and L2 and R1 and R2, but there's not. And because of that, like I, I just wasn't having a lot of fun playing Halo Infinite. And you can make jokes about Halo Infinite not being fun, but you can have some fun with it. But I just felt like my experience on the Logitech G Cloud was not what I wanted it to be. But the next game and the final game we're going to take a look at was definitely the worst performing game. And I changed nothing. I was sitting in the same spot I was for this entire video. And that is with Forza Horizon 5. You could see that there is a huge drop in frame rate with this game. And frame rate issues are a problem, especially in a racing game, because it's based on reflexes. There's curves, there's there's things you need to take into uh, account when you're driving around, racing around, trying to set high times. Once again, the R2 and L2 triggers, you know, that's uh, accelerate and brake. And it was once again a problem with this because I just don't like their positioning. I don't like the way they feel. And the more I think about this system, the more I realize it, it's pointless. Like it doesn't have a point. So really, I'm left with a question that I started this video out with is, why does this exist at $350? It's a Google tablet, essentially. And yes, there's tons of tablets out there. There's tons of smartphones out there. There's tons of stuff out there. Can you do things like emulation on this? Yes, you can. ETA Prime has done a video on this. He was a lot more positive about this than I was, but he was able to get some emulation up and running but it's not really designed for emulation you could put emulation on here but if you just want something to play your your video games your retro games and emulate them on a system there are far better systems out there that are more powerful have more space on them internally and of course are optimized for retro games meaning things like the emulators are already put onto them you have to build everything from the ground up with this so then what about google store games like do you really want to play google store games on this device and it doesn't even work all that great when you're trying to play them I mean, most people who want to play Google Play games are playing them on their cell phone. And then the xCloud stuff. The experience is not any different. The experience is not different than if you had a cell phone or a tablet and a controller. And guess what? You probably have a cell phone. You probably have a tablet. You probably have some sort of device that can play xCloud stuff on it. So if you're just fiending and you're dying for playing your Xbox games via the cloud on xCloud, you can already do that. So I question what 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 niche does this fill? What what problem? Because products are supposed to fill a, a niche or, or, you know, fill a problem that exists on the marketplace. And I don't see a single thing that this thing does that you can't get with a, a knockoff tablet that's stronger than this for less price or a cell phone that you already have. I don't understand it. I don't I don't like this thing. I don't like the controls. I don't like the button placement for the L 
to an R2. I think it's horrible. The fact that there's no gap there, it's not comfortable. This is a pointless device. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'll probably just sit it in my collection and hope that it completely bombs so that one day it's rare and I could sell it maybe, but it's pointless, man. If you want to do this stuff, buy a Steam Deck. You can get a Steam Deck for $400. Yes, it only has 64 gigs of memory, but you could buy a micro SD card or you probably have one laying around and you could do so much more with the Steam Deck. Buy a Nintendo Switch. You actually play Nintendo games on there and they run natively on there. Just avoid the cloud stuff. If you want to play emulators, buy an emulation device. They're a dime a dozen and they're not as expensive as this is. So Logitech G Cloud, I don't understand who it's for, but you know what? It's not for me. But if you are just really interested in checking it out, I, I guess you could pick it up and waste your $350 for some ungodly reason. So yes, those are my thoughts on the Logitech G Cloud. I hate this thing. I don't like it. It serves no purpose for me, and I'll probably never touch it again, ever. Maybe I'll throw it away. You know what I'm gonna do? This will make a great Christmas gift for one of my cousin's kids because she has a whole flock of kids and I just give them stuff that I reuse and recycle. So Natasha's children, Joey or Jordan or Carlos, one of you bastards are gonna get this little device here. So Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and enjoy it.